you live from the Camp New. This is the second ever episode of The Bench. On this week's episode, we're going to be talking about Henri and Scolzi, the comeback kings. But which is the more valuable signing to their club? Also, the African Cup of Nations. It happens every two years and is a massive toll on many Premier League clubs. But which one does it affect the most? We're also going to be talking Sophie's Choice, Demba Ba or Adebayor. Balotelli Watch, everybody's favourite segment, and a brand new segment in a word. That's all coming up and more. Joining me this week on the bench, as they do every week, we have the ever-present and ever-cynical Jonathan Grunstein. Good to be back. We made it. We made it. And the savant mine, Nicholas Lasca. Episode done. Let's do this. <laughs> all right, well, let's jump straight into the first line of questioning. Henri and Scolzi, they both were kings in their day. Which is the better signing? For me, Personally, I think Scolzi might have a slightly bigger impact. Just personally, I think Henri, you know, he hasn't been in the Premier League in a while and he's coming back in now. Um, he's been playing in, in the MLS. Scolzi, he sort of had like a sort of an injury layoff, if you want to picture it like that. He's a bit older than Henri, he's 37, but he's sort of familiar with the Premier League. He was still effective up right up until he retired. So I'm going to go with Scolzi, but, you know, if I was either club, I'd rather neither of them. And Grunstein, I'm assuming you think they should both be put out to oh, pasture. Massively both put out to pasture. <laughs> the answer is Skulls because he's there till the end of the season and even longer before beyond, but on reason he's there till the end of February before he goes back to New York. Mm, good point. But the correct answer, as we said, is neither. They're, it's a classic case of wallpapering <laughs> over the cracks. Yeah. <laughs> it smacks of desperation. It smacks of desperation and it also smacks of incompetence as well. <laughs> sentimental fans, <laughs> sentimental <laughs> fans might um, be fooled by it, but the realistic fans would know that Arsene Wenger it's no substitute for us and going into the transfer market and actually buying a striker, which they do need. I agree. Not only to support Van Persie, but also replace Van Persie when he leaves. Mm. <laughs> and, and Ferguson needed to buy an attacking midfielder last off-season as well. Cleverly was good at the start of the year, but... He's been was, injured, unfortunately. Yeah, and I don't know if he's a title-winning starting centre mid yeah, I would week agree. in, week out. I would agree with that. Um, yeah, I would agree. And it's just it's wallpapering over the fact that they need to go into the transfer market and actually spend some money. Yeah. The problem is, is both managers have come out and said that the January market, the January transfer window, you just don't get good deals. And yeah. it's just a terrible time to buy players. So I well, guess it's you a what. temporary solution. If my team Newcastle can buy something called the Papis Sisse, <laughs> then I think Arsenal or Man United can spare a quid to buy someone half decent. And speaking of Papis Demba Sisse, he's off to the African Cup of Nations. It happens every two years and it's a massive, massive Pain in the ass for many Premier League managers, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Which is the biggest loss, Grinstein? And before I say which the biggest loss is, I think that Arsenal would be celebrating right now because they've actually lost Maro and Chamak. <laughs> and if one of our loyal fans says he is the most expensive free transfer in football history, <laughs> so they would be celebrating about the African Cup of Nations arriving. Um, there's 13 players that have gone to the African Cup of Nations. The two biggest ones, in my mind, in terms of loss to their side, are Yaya Toure for Man City and Demba Bar for my boys, Newcastle United. And the clear answer is that Demba Bar is a far more significant loss. He has scored 15 of Newcastle's 30 goals this season, and Shola Amiobi's replacement wouldn't have scored 15 goals in his glittering 15-year career at <laughs> Newcastle. And Yaya Toure can be replaced by the class that Man, Man City have waiting on the bench in Nasri or even Milner playing in the centre of the park where he's played really well in the past. So mm. for me, the clear answer is Demba Bar. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree. I'll tell you who it isn't. John Obi Mikel. He's an absolute <laughs> clown. I think he's still running full speed to his plane, which he missed <laughs> half an hour ago. He's the slowest man on the planet. I think you rejoice every time the African Cup of Nations is on because at least he gets the f out of That's 100% the case. But now that Villas Boas is in charge, at least, you know, we have some fresh blood there. But I would tend to agree with Demba Bar. I think Yaya Toure is the best player that's gone, yeah, in my agreed. opinion. Agreed. And yeah, like there's no replacing his quality. But in terms of value to a team, if you look at what Demba Bar does, the, the, the amount of points that they've won on the back of just his finishing and just up front, all around brilliance is, is staggering. And to lose him, it's a big blow to them. Mm. Um, this is an interesting period for Newcastle. We'll see if they get through it. I mean... But uh, not. <laughs> no Doubt it. <laughs> Why not? With Leon Best up front and yeah. Shola Amiobi, that yeah. is the most deadly two-pronged attack. Uh -huh. You I'm may have noticed that Chick Tiote has also gone for the African yeah. Cup of Nations. Yeah, two best players. But you know, you do know what they say. They say Maradona good, Pele great, Leon best. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? His mother? <laughs> <laughs> this is best. <Bess>. Yeah. <laughs> she knows her football. She does. She does know her football. Sophie's Choice. 
options, two scenarios, that's what Sophie's Choice is all about. We discuss which one would you rather have. This week, we're talking about Demba Bar or Adebayor. So Nico, if you could have one striker in their current form, who would it be? Oh, Jesus. Okay. I'm going to say Adebayor, and I'm going to say it because I don't think Demba Bar's knee is going to last another after this African Cup of Nations. He's got the knee, the right knee of an 80 year old man. Ticking time bombs. Ticking time bombs, which is why he's failed two medicals in his life, which is more medicals than I've ever heard of anyone failing before ever. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna take Adebayor. I think he's very classy. Both players tend to play half a season well and then fade. Adebayor's a big exponent of this. Um, he also plays really well when he's motivated. So he, he might fade now that you know everyone's happy with him at, at Spurs. So it's with some trepidation, but I just think that he really has the ability to lead the line for a club that is battling for a title. And, and I think he would fit in at any top four club. Mm. I think we all know what your answer is going to be this question. Oh, I'd Steve. take Demba Bar over Lionel Messi any day of the week. So <laughs> I'm obviously going to take him over Adebayor. No. Subjectively, I'd love to say that Demba Bar is the answer, but I think the only um, facet of his game that he beats Adebayor in is his finishing. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said before, he scored 15 goals, but he only has one assist, whereas Adebayor has nine goals and seven assists. Cool, I'd ra- stats. I'll hit you with that. Hit with I'd, r- I'd rather a player who brings other people into the game like Adebayor does, does much better than Demba Bar. He can hold the ball up, he can take players on, and really bring his team into the game and mm-hmm. lift the team. Mm-hmm. And Subjectively, I really think this show needs to climb out of the arse of Demba Bar. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I've set up camp there. I've set up camp. I ain't <laughs> you do have to Until say. That, <laughs> you do have to say though that um, Adebayor's wage demands are a little bit more yeah. ludicrous. Sure. If I've got my fiscal conservative hat on, I would rather pay uh, Demba peanuts, which he's on, um, than Adebayor getting two hundred thousand a week, which is double the GDP of his home country. Because <laughs> so, it's a poor nation. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's shocking. Poor Togo. Togo. Yeah. <laughs> poor Just throw him a bone. Give him yeah. half of it. <laughs> I actually read midweek that one of the um, Spurs players was chatting to Adebayor at training and making fun of the fact, you know, like, yeah, oh, poor Adebayor, you earn £200,000 a week, you can't afford to pay your 50 quid fine for showing up late to training. And he goes, don't be ridiculous, I'm on £250,000 a week. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, that's my dream. Maybe his maths isn't so good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. We're going to try a brand new segment now. This is called In a Word. In a Word! How this segment works is I say a sentence leaving the last word blank and then one of my esteemed panellists fills in the blank spot. So we'll start with Chelsea signing Gary Cahill was... Necessary. I think they're about to lose Alex. They're going to be a centre-back short. And I think that David Luiz, at best, is a train wreck of a defender. <laughs> so, you know, what do you do? You go out, you buy a British centre-back who partners Terry in the, in the English team. I haven't seen a lot of Cahill because he plays for, uh, for because he plays for Bolton. A rare admission. A rare, a rare. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, they're always leaking goals. I don't know if it's his fault or not. We'll find out pretty soon if he makes the grade. And Grunstein? Yeah, my word is sound. He's no world beater, Gary Cahill, but Chelsea need a defender. I don't know if he's top four class, but he might fill a gap. Um, as Nico said, David Luiz has been pretty awful since his first few games last year and since he framed Krusty the Clown in season one of uh, The Simpsons. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Alex leaving, I think it's a sound move. Sure. Tim Cahill's goal drought is? Disappointing. This is just past the prime of his career and I think that he's better than this and you know he's not really got so many injuries, not that I have a a phone into the Everton dressing room. I think he's better than that, and I think he needs to be finding the net. Part of the reason why Everton is struggling is because they have relied on his goals, and he's not doing it, so it's, I find it disappointing. My word's ominous. A player who makes a living out of scoring opportune goals needs to score goals, mm. and if he's not scoring, he's not much help to that team. He's not mm. the kind of player that can boss a midfield or control the game. Mm. So it's his one real, real, real strength, and if he's not pulling his weight, um, it's not looking too good for him. Having said that, when he plays for the Socceroos, he might morph into Pele again. So I think the real test will be when he does for the Socceroos because bring, that brings out the best in him. True. So dangerous. QPR's decision to bring on Mark Hughes is? A double-edged sword. I'm going to cheat there. I've cheated. <laughs> have you hyphenated? I have uh, broken the barrier. you hyphenated. <laughs> double-edged sword. <laughs> There's some massive hyphenation going on in there. Um, he's a good manager. He's done well in the past with Man City and took Fulham. Um, to Europe last year, but I feel Neil Warnock probably would have righted the ship and would have stayed there for a few years. I think if Mark Hughes keeps them up, he's gone. He's a money-grubbing whore. He'll take whatever offer he gets and it will build his profile if he keeps them up. Mm. And you, Nicholas? 
Excellent. My word is excellent. I love this decision by QPR. Putting aside the money grabbing whore, he's managed at big clubs, he's managed at small clubs. QPR have an eye on... I know they're in relegation trouble now. Mm. I don't think they'll stay there, just for the record. But I think they've got their eye on, you know, becoming a good Premier League side and blossoming. And I think Hughes... And they've got lots of money to throw around, you know? I think Hughes is a good manager for them. He can take them places. You know, if he stays there, the course, that's the key. He's not. Uh, Well, I think he could. He he, he had a tough time finding a gig anywhere else. Yeah. He had a tough time getting paid more than what he was getting paid before. That's that's true. (laughs) He's certainly a character, and someone else who's a massive character is our favourite, Balotelli. It's time for Balotelli Watch. Balotelli Watch. This week, Balotelli, in all his brilliance, has worked up at a local school in Manchester. While he's there, he's asked where the toilet is, dropped the kids off at the pool, and then walked around for 10 minutes like he owned the joint before leaving. What do you make of this, Grunstein? He's such a character. <laughs> he really is. I would love to know whether the turds that he dropped at that school have as much personality as him. <laughs> Has he put them on ratemypoo.com or anything? <laughs> wow, I haven't been to rate my poo in years. <laughs> Not since high school. I was there this morning looking for that. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> sure. It'd fetch a fair bit of money on eBay, I imagine. It would. Yeah. It would. I wonder if it has a little mohawk of its own. <laughs> Golden mohawk. <laughs> Golden mohawk. <laughs> All right, we might leave it there. I think that's a sound note to end this week's episode. I'd like to thank my esteemed colleagues once again, Grunstein Nico. Thank you. And we'll be back next week for the bench. Time to shuffle those papers. <laughs>